In this video, we just talked about get for version control. And now we're going to talk about how we can share and work on different Git repositories by posting them on GitHub as a remote source for them. So we're going to talk in this set of video lectures. It'll be an introduction to using GitHub. And then in the last or, or one of the other lectures, I'll talk some more about this idea of, of working together and collaborating through this process of posting something that you all have access to on GitHub and then pushing and pulling with local uh, repositories that you have under GitHub version control. So GitHub lets you host these Git repositories online. Um, that becomes really convenient because it lets you work collaboratively where several different people can work on the same project and you all have access to this shared repository. Um, it's shared because there's this remote version up on GitHub, but then you all can have local versions on your own computer and you can push the commits you make up and then you can pull the commits that other people have made onto your own. So in theory, you have this situation um, where each of you on the team has the same copy on your computer of kind of what's going on and what's being stored up on the GitHub repository. Um, you can also take a project that somebody else has done and you can fork it. If you want to expand on it and kind of alter it some for your own work, you can take that and pull it in. And you can also suggest changes to other people's repositories using pull requests. So for example, if you're working with, um, say that you're working with an R package and the person is developing that R package on GitHub. If there's a place in the help file where there's a typo, you can fork their repository make the change to that typo and do a commit explaining that message and then do a pull request and re request that they pull that change back in to their main version. So to be able to do all of this and to kind of post something on GitHub, uh, you do need to have a GitHub account. So you can sign up at github.com and they're, they're different options. They've got some options that are really kind of industrial strengths for people working on really large corporate teams um, for everything that we're doing in this class of free account will be fun. All right, so as we work on this, you want to think about the basic unit in GitHub as being the repository. Um, and typically we'll have these as being our, our projects. We'll, add this extra piece where we kind of track them with Git and make them a Git repository. And then often we will share them on GitHub, um, either publicly or privately. And so we, we make it a GitHub repository as well to have that remote version. So um, our projects have like to become an R project, they get the special file that ends in .R proj that saves some extra stuff. Git works a similar way. When something's tracked as a Git repository, it gets this special directory called .get. So it's actually rather than just a file, it's a whole directory, but it has all that information in that, that's tracking stuff. This starts with .get, so you actually, in many computer operating systems, you won't see that directory if you like look in your in your file finder, um, because a lot of times these dot files are hidden for 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 the default settings for looking at files in in a file finder. Um, but if you want to see them, if you're working in a terminal, you can do ls and then you can do hyphen a to see that. So just to show that, if you want to go into our studio and you look at your terminal. You can do ls, that will list all of the files in your current working directory. And these commands are a little bit different from R because these are the actual kind of Linux or Unix commands. And so you can see the files here, you can see that this is lining up with most of the files that we have here, but some of the ones get hidden. So ones that start with a dot get hidden. To see all of the files in all of the directories, you can do ls and then a hyphen a, that's short for all. And that will show you all of those. So it shows you um, the the git ignore, and then it also shows this git directory. So these are the this git directory is the piece that's kind of like containing all the information that gets tracked by this being a git repository. All right, as you work with GitHub, you can think of it kind of kind of like this image, and this this comes from GitHub. So on your computer, you have a repository, you have a directory that you're tracking with Git, so you've made it a Git repository. But then you might wanna share this with other folks and, and kind of collaborate on it. So you can have a repository um, that's living up in the cloud,
as you're working with a repository on GitHub that you own, that you have in your GitHub directory, either because you put it there or because you forked it from someone else, you can interact between that one and the one on your computer by pushing and pulling once you have it set up. The other thing that you can do is you can pull from a remote that you forked, and you can also do in a request for, for um, a pull request to that upstream if there's something that you have to suggest as a change, but it's not a repository that you own. So in class, I guess before we go on, in class, we'll really be working with this system a lot, where we've got one that you control that you're working back and forth with. But it is helpful to kind of keep in mind in the future, once you leave the class, that there's this functionality as well for forking something that you don't own and working with it and even recommending, um, suggesting things that they take back into their main code. So we're gonna go through these slides, the steps for taking something that's on your computer and then putting it up in GitHub as a repository and then how you can connect between the two. Uh, we'll also talk very briefly about how if there is something up on GitHub that you have access to, that you can clone that to set up that connection. So in that case, you don't have it on your computer yet, but it exists in GitHub and then you're pulling it down. And for the group projects, I think we'll probably have more of that set up where there will be a repository that you'll wanna clone. Well, regardless of how you make that connection between something that's up on GitHub and something on your computer, once you do make that connection between the remote version and your local version, the process of making commits and then pushing and pulling them will be exactly the same. So, so that, that process of either cloning or pushing up initially to GitHub, that's just a question of setting it up initially. All right, so I'm gonna actually start on slide eight before we go back to slide seven because there's a step that is helpful to take that will work for anything that you do from RStudio trying to connect it to GitHub. So this isn't something you do for a specific project, it's something that you kind of do globally once and then it will make your life easier. So um, typically you have to log in when you're, when you're signing into GitHub once you have an account there. But there is a way that you can set up a code from our studio and from your computer in general, where GitHub will recognize your computer and it won't keep asking you for your login information every time you try to send something up to one of your repositories. So we're gonna do that by creating what's called an RSA key. And then once we do it, it makes things nicer because you don't have to keep on doing that like login information every time you wanna get something from your computer to your GitHub repository or pull something from that down. So this is something that we'll do again in the global options in RStudio. So if you go into RStudio and it doesn't matter which project you're in, go up to tools and then do global options. If you go into get SVN, you'll have this choice um, to do an RSA key. I already have one, so I'm not gonna change mine because then I'd have to update it in a few places where I, where I kind of like use this functionality. But if you don't have one already, click on create RSA key and it will create one for you. Once you do have one created, you can come up to view public key and that'll open this window with a really, really long piece of information. You wanna copy that. You can do whatever, like control C on most computers on a Mac, I guess, um, it's, or command C, it's, it's letting us do that. But whatever the keyword shortcut is for copying on your computer, if you copy that, and then you're gonna to wanna to go into your GitHub account. In your GitHub account, if you click beside your profile, you should be able to go into settings. This has a lot of different options over here. One of them is SSH and GPG keys. You can do new SSH key and then you will paste in here what you just copied from RStudio, that really long and complex string. So this piece. Then you'll want to give it a title. This is really for your computer, so you should link this up with the name of your computer. So if it's like a lab desktop, then put that in. If it's your personal laptop, you might want to put that in. You'll see you can put more than one of these in, so you can connect from several different computers if you want to as you do that. So once you do this, you'll have this nice kind of um, 
way that you can connect with GitHub that won't require you to log in every time. So now we're at the stage where we can actually look at the idea of connecting a specific specific repository that we have on our computer, sending that up and connecting it to a repository on GitHub. So um, to do that, we're going to need to kind of create a blank repository in GitHub, and then we'll push up from our computer there, and we'll make that first push with a special command that will kind of say, like, take everything we have here and replace anything there with that. So I've got some of the steps here, and we'll go through it for this example of doing the practice underscore R. All right, so if I go into GitHub, you can see that if you go into your account, your profile, it will list all of these repositories that you might have. Um, I now have quite a lot of repositories, but each one of these is kind of like a separate directory of files, and almost all of them are also tagged as an R project. So we're going to create one of these, and then once you have it, you can go in and you'll be able to see that it really is mimicking kind of like that file structure of the directory that you had. So you can really think of these repositories again just as one of those directories with these special tags on it and that it's being tracked. All right, so to make a new one, to be able to connect stuff we have on our computer up to that, you go up to this plus, and we want to do a new repository. We can choose the repository name. They need to be unique across the repositories that you have for your GitHub account. And I would suggest using the same name that you have for the R project on your computer, that directory name. So I'll name this practice underscore R. I'm not going to put in any description. You can choose whether to make this public or private. In this case, I'll make it public. Um, and I suggest that you don't put any of these in. Uh, so we can create the repository. And this gives us some information about the setup if we, if we want to have it. So we're in the case where we want to push something that exists up from the command line. So it actually gives us tips for kind of how we can do this. And if you want to, you can copy this and use this directly. And we actually, I think, aren't going to need this middle one. Just if you use the first and the last would be enough. So this first step, we can copy that and go into our terminal. Again, you should have that next to the console. And if you have the case where um, you're finding that it's not using a bash shell, which I talked about in the last video, then we might need to resolve that before you'll be able to do this next step on your own computer. But that's something we'll, we'll go through and do some troubleshooting with specific computers during the, the in-class part of, of the course this week. Okay, so you can put in get remote. This is, this is adding that address of the remote repository within this specific repository. So I'm working right now in practice R. I've got it set up so we've got get already. And then by default, the terminal will open with that working directory. So we can go in and do that. And that will set that up. Um, then the next step is we need to push everything that we have up to that repository. So yeah, it looks like now they're having you do some of the branch stuff. But for just a classic approach to this, we can just do this part of it, the get push you origin. We might need to put master in as well. Yeah, we'll put in master. So if you type in git push hyphen u origin master. So this is pushing up to that origin that we just made, the master branch that we have here on, on our computer. And this u option is going to override if there's anything up there already. So the first time we do it, we want to do this. Once we do this, we won't need to do a lot more stuff in the terminal. If everything worked well, at this point, you should see some stuff like this where it talks about counting objects and then it's compressing some stuff and then it's, it's pushed it up to the remote. It might ask you like a yes, no question if you recognize the remote and you really want to kind of like work with that and you can respond as a yes to that. And then once we do that, if you go back to GitHub, and you go into that repository you just made, you should see that everything got pushed up there. You can see everything that you had on your computer is now up there. 
So now that we've done this connection, like that, that's the only piece of this where you've kind of got to mess with command line and things like that. And I think some students in the class have actually found options where they don't even have to get to the level of the command line and they can do it kind of more with point and click. Although I don't think it's bad to learn how to do it from the command line. Um, but once you've done that, you can go in to your projects and as you make commits, you can make the commit to your computer, but you also now have the option to send that up to the version on GitHub. So we can see here that you've got now these green and blue arrows that operate. So the green means push something I did up to GitHub and the blue means pull something down from GitHub onto my local computer. So let's try um, maybe adding one more column here. So I think we looked at this, I'm trying to remember what some of the other columns in World Cup were. Um, all right, so we could include in shots too maybe. So let's add in shots. All right, great, so we've got that column in too. Now, once we save this, we should see in our commit window that we now have a change to this file. So we can click through there and we can say, add shots column to table. All right, so if we commit that, that commit has been saved into our computer. And we, if we look in the history, we can see that the latest thing was adding the shots column and we can see the change down there. Right now though, we haven't done anything to send it up to GitHub. So GitHub, the repository there is out of sync with our local one. If we look here in GitHub, we can see that if we look at the our markdown file, it doesn't have that change yet. It's still got the original version. So we can go in and we can use this up arrow to push this commit. And you can see here, it's got the information that, that the branch of it, that origin master, the branch on GitHub, or sorry, the, the, the local branch is ahead of the one on origin by one commit. So if we push up, it's gonna send it up to GitHub. If you succeeded, you should get a message like this, that we sent this commit up to GitHub. And now if we go and look, we can look at this, and we can see that that version has been updated now. So these are back in sync again. All right, over here, this is what I was not finding before, you can see all the commits that have happened. So we have access to that history in GitHub as well. And so if we click on that now, you can see that it has this latest change that we made. So again, this is another place where we can see all this history. As we start to work with different people in a team, you'll see that all of the different additions that get made will show up here. So you'll actually see additions from lots of different people. If somebody else makes a change here, and we can actually, I, I don't think you wanna do this very often, but in a pinch, you can actually make edits to plain text files on GitHub as well and make the commits there. So we could go through and we could maybe add one more row. Here you can do your commit message right here. And so we can say add one more row to table. Um, and this is for an example of pulling changes from the remote branch. All right, you can commit the change here. And now you will see, if we go into our code, we'll be able to see that we have this extra commit. So you can see it happened right here. Because that's happened on GitHub, we don't have that in our example here. But if we do the blue down arrow, that will pull that latest commit in. And now you can see that it's changed. So we've got the change here as well. 
All right, so just to review the things that we just went over in our studio, if you wanna make a new repository, you can start in GitHub by making one there, choosing to create a new repository, and then you name that, and you typically wanna name that the same thing as the R project that you're gonna link with it. And then you can leave everything else as is. And then you push from your local repository to the empty GitHub repository you created by using the terminal and doing um, first adding the remote with the address that it gives you. And typically this would be get at github.com and then a colon and then your GitHub handle minus GE Andrews and then a forward slash and the name of the repository, the name of the project dot get. So once you do that, you've given the address on your local one to what that, that origin is. And then you can push everything you have there by doing get push with the U option. So hyphen U origin master. And that'll push what you have on your computer up to that, that origin repository. In some cases, somebody else might have pushed a repository up and they want to share it with you. And so in that case, to pull a repository that already exists and where you have access to it, you want to do CD on your computer, like on your terminal, to change into the place where you want to pull it. And then you can use get clone, get at github.com, and you can use that to clone. There's also the option um, through GitHub, often if you visit a repository, we have in the past downloaded the compressed files, like downloaded the whole zip file, but there's also an option up there in most cases for you to be able to clone a repository somewhere locally. So that's a way that you could do this as well that would avoid using the, the command line. Once you have it locally, you can push and pull using the blue and the green arrows to keep, keep in sync between the remote version and the local version.